Welcome to day eight. Today was a really good day. We spent the day down at DTM on the dyno. Um, it was really good just to run the car up and um, put all that background knowledge that I'd learned through the HP Academy online, all the EFI tuning fundamentals into action today. And um, to watch Andre do all his tuning and then actually sit in the driver's seat and work all that out was really interesting. So it was good to have the background knowledge from the course that I did online and then follow it through and go right through to the end, actually making good numbers out of the car. So today we, we made a bit over 280 kilowatts at the wheels. It's solid, uh, it's only a small turbo. It's only a relatively small setup running 22 PSI. And that power figure is actually really, really good for what I want to do with the car. Remembering it's not a competition vehicle, it's basically a, um, a fun car that I want to keep uh, reliable and um, and yeah my other cars previous to this one have produced less power than that and have still been fine so that's actually quite good and the way it runs and the really broad torque curve will suit the way I want to drive the car and that's something I think you can forget with a small motor that it's um, it's sort of you know, your peak power doesn't really mean a whole lot on the track. It's more that broad torque curve. And, um, and what I want to do with it is sort of, yeah, be able to play with that throttle mid corner and uh, get a lot of wheel spin and a lot of smoke and yeah, have a reliable setup. So today was really good. We, um, we got into some dramas at the end of the day with the alternator giving up. Um, I'm not too sure what happened, but I think, yeah, after we tested it, uh, it basically just failed on us. Um, it just won't charge anymore. Maybe we were uh, overrunning it. I don't think it was a genuine one to start with, so we weren't work working with anything quality to start with, which was a bit of a letdown. Um, so we've chased up a new one, and tomorrow hopefully we'll pick it up and get back on the dyno and just clean up that, that tune that was lacking because of the loss of power. So that affects the, the ignition, the, um, the whole fuel side of things. You know, injectors need a proper amount of um, power to open cleanly. Um, so yeah, we'll clean all that up tomorrow and take it off the dyno, bring it back home. And yeah, that'll be a, um, a well-deserved rest for us, hopefully tomorrow. Day eight, and today we got into the fun part of this project, which was the dyno tuning. Finally a chance to put all of Nigel's fabrication work um, to the test, uh, check out all our wiring and get everything up and running on DTM's uh, DTS dyno system. Uh, everything went really, really well for the start of the day. I got in there first and actually put a tune into the ECU, went through all the light throttle areas and mapped all of that out and then started progressing onto boost. Uh, it's only a small turbo, it's a TDO6 20G with an eight centimeter exhaust housing. So it's not a massive turbo and we were never expecting huge numbers from it. I was quite surprised though, even on the wastegate spring pressure, it was still putting out really, really good power. Uh, in the end, with 22 PSI, we, we had a pretty solid figure of 287 kilowatts at the rear wheels. Now, just to put that into perspective, a lot of the guys, particularly back home in New Zealand who are drifting, uh, seems like they're chasing really big power numbers these days, and it's not uncommon to see cars with four or 500 kilowatts at the rear wheels. And Nigel didn't want that sort of combination. He hasn't got a turbo that would produce that. What he was after instead was a lower figure but a much broader torque curve. So this turbo is making full boost by about 4,000 RPM. Uh, it's got a really flat torque curve all the way up to 7,500 RPM. And what that means is the car's gonna be really easy for Nigel to drive. Basically anywhere in the rev range, he can just put his foot on the throttle. It's gonna make full boost straight away and that's gonna make it really easy for him to bake the tires in just about any gear. So that's the type of setup Nigel prefers. That's what we talked about and that's what we achieved. So some of you out there might be sort of thinking 287 kilowatts isn't a hell of a lot of power. Sure it's not, but that's what Nigel needs to get the job done.
Later in the day we were just finishing off some of the tune and I, I think I wasted probably about an hour uh, chasing a problem that I didn't catch quickly. Uh, put that down to maybe a little bit of tiredness creeping in there. Um, ended up finding I was making some strange adjustments to the fuel map and going back over the same zones making changes to, to try and get everything right. After doing this for quite a while I noticed the battery voltage was down at about 8.5 maybe 9 volts so um, the alternator had actually failed on the car it wasn't charging and that, that uh, constant 14 volts that we expect is, is really critical. The fuel pump needs that to pump fuel properly, the ECU needs it to operate the injectors properly, and of course our ignition system doesn't have as much spark energy. So basically wasted a, a good hour of, of the day yesterday doing that, and, and then finding we had an alternator problem. Um, tomorrow's job is to track down a new alternator and, and get that fixed up so we can complete the tune. In the afternoon I spent a couple of hours teaching both Nigel and Craig from DTM Automatics uh, how to tune. Uh, so Nigel had already been through our EFI Fundamentals online tuning course and he had the, the basics already down and this was a chance for Nigel to put that into practice. I find like people who haven't used a dyno before there's a lot going on and I think Nigel to start with was a little bit overwhelmed. He's trying to watch the laptop keyboard, trying to control the engine RPM, the load on the engine, adjust the dyno settings, watch the air fuel ratio, watch the engine coolant temp and there's a lot of things going on so you're sort of constantly scanning your eyes across about six or seven things and I know to start with Nigel was a little uncomfortable. He got the hang of it really, really quickly and in the end he was making some adjustments to the fuel and ignition and seeing how those results actually panned out on the dyno. So tomorrow once we've got the alternator replaced, um, Nigel's going to jump back in the seat and we'll do some full power runs and, and actually get Nigel to do some full power ramp tuning. So um, that should be really good, hopefully we'll, we'll finish everything off tomorrow on a high, can't wait.